This is a beginner guide for raiding and Mythic Plus in patch 10.2.5 Seeds of Renewal. There's going to be no information overload. I can promise you that. We are going to hit the ground running. And hopefully, if I do my job correctly, you can know exactly how to play this to a really great standard and hit the ground running. Let's start off with the stat priority. First and foremost, intellect and eye level over everything. That is it. You do have two items that are the same eye level, however, or you would just like to look at the secondary stat priority. This is going to be it. We're going to start off with critical strike, then go for verse, then mastery, and lastly haste. If you are just doing mythic plus and not raiding, you can opt for a bit more versatility. But again, eye level is king. Don't worry too much about this. Same with talents, if you're raiding, this one on the left is, left is best, and for Mythic Plus, it's the one on the right here. I'm not going to go through every individual talent, as again, information overload, but when we go through the priority list and core rotation, I will be going over the really important talents that you need to know about. And there is an import string down below in the description, so you can just shove these straight into your game at ease. Before we get on to the core rotation, though, let's look at cooldowns. Now, Shamans have a hell of a lot of different spells, especially all the totems and utilities. It's actually quite crazy looking through their spell book. So these are some of the priority ones I think you should really be aware of. Again, try not to overwhelm yourself because it is quite a complex spec, especially when healing. But when you are more comfortable with the spec, etc., and you've had some practice with it, I do always advise that you go through the talent tree and the spell book and look at every single one and just see how it all fits together. But don't worry about that for the moment because I've got you covered. Starting on the top then with Astral Shift, it's a very simple self-defensive, reducing damage by 40% for 12 seconds. Woohoo! Ascendance then is a really interesting one. This is one that's going to help with your healing. So you're going to transform into an Ascendant, which is like the elementals that were that boss in Bastion of Twilight back in Cataclysm, the one in the Twilight Highlands. If you remember that, great. If not, anyway, you'll see when you use this cooldown. Basically, you transform into one of those. And it's actually going to duplicate healing, and then it's going to split it evenly across the raid or group that you are in. So it's actually quite passive, but it's really, really cool. Nature Swiftness is really simple. It's just going to make an expel um, instant. Woohoo. Um, Bloodlust and Heroism, of course, very, very important. You've probably seen this. If you haven't, then a few classes have this. It's going to increase the party, so everyone you're with, their haste by 30% for a huge 40 second period. And then you can't use it again for a long while. This is fantastic. And you're going to use this when it's most needed, or like, you know, because obviously you're doing a lot more DPS in that period. Um, so often your raid leader, etc., will call this out when, when it's needed. Then we've got the Spirit Link Totem, and FYI, Shamans have a ton of different totems. It's kind of how Shamans work. You place totems down and they do cool stuff. The Spirit Link Totem is going to give raid-wide damage reduction, and it's then going to like actually redistribute the health that it's saved of the people um, across the raid. Hopefully that made sense. Got a few more on this slide. Healing Tide Totem, plop it down, boom, 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 does tons of healing. Ancestral Guidance is going to be where 25% of uh, damage and healing is actually then going to get, again, duplicated um, across the raid. And then we've got the Earth Elemental, which is going to summon an Earth Elemental to protect you and your allies for one minute. However, the most important thing we've got here is that you also gain 15% extra max health when you have this up. Going on to the utilities then, and again, I'm not going to include all of the totems in here because I'll be here all day. Um, Ghost Wolf, 40% movement speed, and it works in combat, FYI. Very, very, very good. Um, I love Ghost Wolf. I think it's one of the best speed increases any class has. Hex is like Polymorph, if you're aware of mages. Um, you can actually get different hexes, and you can kind of pick these up on the auction house or other places where you can change your hex spell and um, you can actually hex someone into a different creature, but it's going to incapacitate them for a whole minute. Wind Shear is our kick or interrupt as it's otherwise known. Uh, this is going to interrupt spell casting. Very, very useful. And then we've got water walking. It means that you and your allies can walk on water. Funny that. And anyway, yeah, let's get on into the actual rotation then. So now that we're in game, I just want to talk about my UI very quickly. And the first thing you're going to notice is this weak aura here. This is from Luxfoss, and I've put a description uh, link down below for that in case you do want it. It's really good visual representation of the cooldowns and things like that that we have and our resources. You can see I've got my mana bar here. And also these two bars are for 
Riptide spell. More on that again in a second. If you do need help setting something like this up, or you have any questions regarding add-ons, the UI, my UI, class questions, anything at all, please do join my Discord, where I'll personally make it my mission to help you and solve any queries you have. WoW is like a very, very complex game, and I'm aware that people can be not so friendly sometimes to beginners. And I want to make sure that you guys can have as much fun as I do in WoW, and that is, is <laughs> that it is as easy as possible to get into, which is why I do these beginner guides. So please, please don't think you're like wasting my time or that it's a hassle for me. I really, really do want to help. Do click that join button down below for my Discord if you need that. And if you need to go one step further, you can and press the join button to become a member where you can then get um, a secret channel on Discord and just import my UI straight in and get more of a private chat, etc., where I can help you even further. But anyway, back to what spells we have. So, going to be going across this big bar here, which is explaining what spells we actually have in our arsenal. First up is going to be Healing Wave, and this is going to cost 7,500 mana, 2.2 second cast, depending on haste, etc. Uh, it's an efficient wave of healing that restores a certain amount of healing to your ally's health. We then have Healing Surge, so Healing Wave, Healing Surge. Healing Surge is a quick one, you can see it's a lot quicker, and restores a very similar amount of costs more mana because it is quicker. So you've got the efficient one, Healing Wave, and the Healing Surge, the non-efficient one. We have Riptide, and this has two charges. Restorative Waters wash over the friendly target, healing them, and an additional heal over time, or hot, 21 seconds. Six second recharge and two charges, so we can use it a lot. All I'm going to say here, use this on cooldown religiously, okay? There's like a gazillion reasons with our set bonus and... With our talents, use this on cooldown. More on that in a minute. Then we've got Primordial Wave. This is on a 45 second call. The last your target of a Primordial Wave, healing them and applying Riptide as well, as well to them. So this spell here we just spoke about, Riptide. Primordial Wave is also going to actually apply Riptide to them. Your next healing wave will also hit all targets affected by your Riptide for 40% of normal healing. So basically, use Primordial Wave... You're then going to get a buff for it for 15 seconds, and then you're going to use your healing wave after that, okay? So your next healing wave will also hit all targets affected by Riptide. So again, you should have this. If in Mythic Plus, it's going to be on basically everyone. Use your Riptide on cooldown, use Primordial Wave, and then use a healing wave. Healing Rain is next. Blanket the target in uh, area in Healing Rains, restoring health to up to six allies um, in the area. This is beautiful. Here it is. It's all water-based of Shaman. It's stunning. Okay. And you can see this bar going down on my weak aura, which is for this. And boom, it is done. So that's what that middle bar is there, if you weak aura. So use this on cooldown as well, preferably in the melee if you're in raid. Then we've got Unleash Life. And you can see it unleashes elemental forces, healing a friendly target, and increasing the effect of your next healing spell. So if it's Riptide, Healing Wave, or Healing Surge, these three here, then it's going to do 35 increased scent in heal if it's a chain heal have i not put chain heal on here oh my god that is really crazy <laughs> i've like got every single spell on here but the main one okay um let's just move chain heal up here for now the chain heal heals the friendly target and then jumps up to 30 yards to heal the four most injured nearby allies and it's reduced by 30 percent with each jump so it jumps from person to person healing them fabulous i know um, so Chain Heal is going to do 15% increased healing and bounces to an additional target. And then we've got Healing Rain or Downpour affects two additional targets. And that's your Healing Rain here. Wellspring is going to do 40% of overhealing done, converted into an Absorb effect. So, got a few totems here I now want to go over. And I am going to tell you when to use these, etc. Uh, a few totems. We've got the Mana Tide totem. This is a big one on a 2.9 minute cooldown. Summons a totem at your feet for 8 seconds, granting 80% increased mana regen to allies within 23 yards. Huge mana regen on the Mana Tide totem. We've then got the Healing Tide totem on a 1.9 minute cooldown. Summons a totem at your feet for 10 seconds, which pulses, healing all party and raid members for a lot of healing, increased by 100% when not in a raid. This is fantastic as a big jumbo heal. Then we've got two Cloud Burst totems. So, oh, I'll actually have to recall it. You can see the tooltip. Summons a totem at your feet for 18 seconds that collects power from all of your healing spells. When the totem then expires, all of that stored healing is going to get released. Fantastic. 
and it's going to heal all injured allies within 46 yards for 24% of all healing done while it was active, divided evenly among targets. Casting the spell a second time, it recalls the totem and releases the healing. Like you can see here, I use it, and then it's like, oh, I've had enough of this now. I'm going to recall it. And the reason why you could recall it early is if you're like, oh my gosh, everyone's about to drop dead, and you need to get that healing out, for example. We've also got the Spirit Link totem. I spoke about this in the cooldowns slide. Summons a totem at the target location for six seconds, which reduces damage taken by all party and raid members by 10% immediately, and every one second, the health of all affected players is redistributed evenly this is also amazing then our chain heal which i should have gone over earlier oops don't shoot me um heals the friendly target and then jumps to up to 30 yards wait we already spoke about this didn't we i told you what it does um oh my god i'm having deja vu so one other thing by the way is that we have these shields you can see this little water globule going round and round me well that's actually my water shield you can have two shields on you the shaman at once so we're going to use Water Shield and Earth Shield. Caster is surrounded by water, granting mana per five seconds. When a melee attack hits you, the caster regains some mana as well. This is fabulous. We can also put Earth Shield on ourselves, and we can also put Earth Shield on somebody else at the same time. I usually put it on the tank. Text the target of an Earthen Shield, increasing your healing on them by 20%, and healing them when they take damage. The heal can only occur... Once every few seconds, maximum nine charges. Earth Shield can only place on the Shaman and one other target. So when you have those two shields on you, you can't put two on someone else. It's two on you, one Earth Shield on somebody else. Shaman, however, can have two elemental shields active on them. And these are all of the main spells that we're going to be using. Okay, now we're actually going to look how it all comes together and what is our priority list and what spells are we going to use when to heal who. It's a big old who, what, when, where, how. Um, so first of all, is this talent down here? I want to show you high tide. Every 100,000 mana you spend brings a high tide, making your next two chain heals jump, sorry, heal for an additional 10% and not reduce with each jump. So remember that when we use our chain here, which is down here on my action bar, that it's going to be reduced by 30% of each jump. When we use high tide after spending 100,000 mana, um, the next two chain heals, not one but two, are going to actually do additional healing and it's going to be the same over everyone. Fantastic. So, so I've just spent some mana and you can see on my weak aura here, there is my two buffs or procs of high tide if i move out of the way you can also see it is here on your buffs it just depends how you have your ui set up and this is why this weak aura is so so useful so you can see then our chain heal is also lit up so we can tell we can use one and two to absorb those high tides when you do have high tide using those chain heals to heal everyone is top priority okay the next priority on our list is going to be using riptide on cool down you can see here there's actually another buff here when we use our riptide and that is this talent up the top here tidal waves when you use riptide you're going to get two stacks of tidal waves and that is going to reduce the cast time of your next healing wave or chain heal by 20 percent or increase the crit chance effect of your next healing surge by 30 percent so remember that chain uh, healing wave is a more efficient one well remember that with healing surge when we which is more of an emergency one when we use riptide that's also going to be even more powerful our healing surge and that is hence why that one is such a oh my gosh i've got to heal them now versus healing wave considering we're using riptide on cooldown and remember this can only stack to two it is going to really impact like which spells and when we're using because of that talent and it's really really useful we also want to make sure that we're using our primordial wave on somebody that doesn't already have riptide on them if i hear and this is my healing bar here from voodoo i'm going to show you um more about that in a minute if i put riptide on myself then i'm not going to want to put my primordial wave on myself because i've already got it it just doesn't make any sense always try and use primordial wave on somebody that doesn't already have riptide on them and don't forget after using your primordial wave your next healing wave will also hit all targets affected by your riptide for 40 percent of normal healing so we want to get those riptides on as many people as possible with our cloudburst totem Unlike the other ones, Healing Tide and Mana Tide, you'll actually see that the Cloudburst one, which has two charges, only has a 30 second, 39 second recharge. 
because of this and how long it's actually out for, we're going to want to make sure that we're not capping on these charges and therefore having at least one Cloudburst totem out while the other one is recharging is a really good way to play this. Just making sure basically that you're not going to cap at two charges ever so that you're getting the most efficient usage of these totems. Another thing we're going to want to do is keep our healing rain on cooldown at all times. Put it in the melee, use it non-stop. Another reason that I always say to put it on the melee area is because of this talent here, Acid Rain. It deals 4,000 nature damage every second up to six enemies inside of your healing rain. And because generally they're going to be at the tank and melee range, that is the best place to put your healing range. One, you're going to have a load of melee allies there to heal with it. And two, that's where all the mobs are going to be. Perfect. The next thing on the list, when and which are we going to use our Unleash Life? Well, you'll notice it only has a 15 second cooldown, so we can use this a hell of a lot. Remember, this is the spell that's going to empower some of our other spells. So it's going to depend when we use it on what spell, on what buff we have. So remember that talent I told you about, High Tide, which every 100,000 mana brings a high tide, make our next two chain heals do, you know, a ton more healing. Well, if we look again at Unleash Life, we'll see here that with, if we use it on chain heal, 15% increased healing and bounces to one additional target. So when we get that high tide buff after spending 100,000 mana, where the healing isn't going to drop after jumping targets, well, this is going to make it actually jump to an additional target and do 15% increased healing, which is huge. So basically, when you get that high tide buff, use Unleash Life and then do your chain heal. Absolutely amazing. It's going to do so much healing. If we're using it in a raid and you haven't got high tide up, always just use it on your healing rain. Because remember, this is going to affect two additional targets. And in the melee, in the raid, there's going to be more than enough people there. I'm going to go through the priority list in Mythic Plus shortly once we get through this one. And if this is confusing, don't worry. I'm going to recap on all of this when we get to the end of the priority list as well in a more compact manner. Another thing to note on our chain heal is our mana tide totem. This is the um, mana regen totem that we can use every 2.9 minutes. And if we look in our talents, there's this one here, Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem. After using that totem, the cast time and mana cost of your Healing Wave and Chain Heal is reduced by 50% for 10 seconds. So as well as just, oh my goodness, I need some mana, let's put Mana Tide Totem down, what you may be inclined to do when that's happening is try and hold off on your healing because you're trying to get that mana back. Actually, that's not what you should do, because, as I said, your Healing Wave and Chain Heal are actually going to have a 50% reduced mana cost and casting time. So it's actually a really, really good time to use this if you actually need to get a lot of healing out that's going to be using a lot of mana. Apart from that, then, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to be using our Chain Heal if a few people are injured. We're going to use our Healing Wave as a little filler, and our Healing Surge if we need a bit more of a Ask the filler, basically, or a bit more of a high priority filler. And then keep up Earth Shield on yourself and the tank at all times. So let's just go through and recap all of that and see how it comes together. So remember, we've got high tide every time we spend 100,000 mana, making our chain heal super duper. Whenever you see that buff come up, use your chain heal. We're going to use rip tide on cooldown and try and spread it over as many people as possible, including with using our Primordial Wave. Don't forget, after your Primordial Wave, to use a Healing Wave within the next 15 seconds. Try and use your Cloud Burst Totem when you can, so that you don't cap on charges. We're also going to use Healing Rain on cooldown. And if in a raid, we're going to use our Unleash Life on cooldown with Healing Rain. However, if we do have that high tide, oh look, we have it right now, then we are going to use that on chain heal. If it's a heavy healing point and we're conscious of mana, we can use our mana tide totem and then get out some more chain heals and healing waves at a cheaper cost and cast time. And then after that, we're just going to use our chain heal, healing wave and healing surge as fillers as and when needed. One thing I also want to talk to you about is one, our mastery, and two, the set bonus from this season. Let's have a quick look at the mastery. It's always something to be aware of, even though you don't really need to be for the rest of Shaman. Uh, it increases healing from your spells by up to 56% based on the current health of your target. Lower health targets are healed for more. That's it. Hence why I said you don't really need to know for Shaman, because it doesn't really do much in your actual rotation. Now, for the set bonus this season, what the two set does is, 
It's going to give your allies a buff called Tidal Reservoir when you use Chain Heal, Healing Surge, and Healing Wave on them. So basically, when you use those free spells, they're going to get a buff that's going to increase the healing they receive from Riptide. So TLDR, it doesn't change the rotation at all. Use Riptide on cooldown. It's just another reason why we do this. For the full set then, who guessed it? It's Riptide, and it's going to increase the healing of that spell by 25%. And then if Riptide is on the same target as your Tidal Reservoir, then the heal over time effect has a 6% chance to create a new Riptide on another ally, then bouncing to even more people. Basically, to tie that up then, when you're using a Chain Heal, Healing Surge, and Healing Wave, it's going to put a buff on people. When you then put Riptide on those people, which you're going to be doing anyway, it's then going to potentially bounce to more people, which is fantastic. This is then the Mythic Plus build that I recommend. It's pretty much the same in the way of the actual rotation. We don't have talents like Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem, etc. Mana isn't really going to be that much of an issue in Mythic Plus, considering you've got so many breakpoints in between. Um, but generally, the rotation is going to be exactly the same. We're not really going to change it for this build at all. But one thing I do actually want to go through with you is how to heal with another add-on called Voodoo. Now, if you don't want to use this, that's fine. If you need help with Cleek, Healbot, um, Voodoo, whatever the hell you use or want to use, you can always join my Discord, like I said, and I'll help you with anything you need. It doesn't have to be the same add-ons that I'm using um, in order for you to get help from me. Um, so it's this here. This is my raid bar here. I don't usually have this huge bar in the middle of the screen. Um, so this is my voodoo bar here. You can see if I left click, it does a healing surge. If I right click, it does a chain heal. If I middle click, it does a riptide. It's this little icon on my mini map. This is voodoo, and it's a healing raid add-on. And it looks quite complex and scary, and it is, <laughs> but I'm going to make it really simple. First things first, let's go to spells. What you can see here, I'm just gonna... so what you can see here is it says mouse key, left click or left button, healing surge. So when I left click on that person, whether it's me or my allies, whoever's in the raid, it's going to do a healing surge. I can delete this out and nothing happens. I can type it in, and it recognizes it as a spell. Or what I can do is actually drag it from my spell book like that. When I left click, boom, my Earth Elemental is now um, summoned. I don't want him. I can uh, put Healing Surge back there, drag it again from his spell book. And this is going to also work with Control. So if I Control left click, it's going to target that person. So if you can see, I've targeted myself down here. Exciting. And same with Shift. Like if I Shift uh, left click, it's going to do a healing wave. Obviously, you can't see I'm pressing Shift. But just know I am. And then if I take my hand off Shift, I can then just do a healing search. And it works with Alt, etc. as well. Mouse wheel up and down. This is fantastic. And I've noticed a lot of people actually didn't know about this. Um, another thing is going to be buffs. Uh, sorry, not buffs where it can get a bit confusing, panels, and then hot icons, okay? Sorry, panels, and then hot icons. And you can see here that we have slots. This is as, confu as confusing as it's going to get, I promise. Um, what I can say then is say, I'd like in slot one, Riptide, please. Okay. When I cast Riptide, if you can see this on the screen, you might need a magnifying glass. <laughs> you can see there in the corner... You can actually see the little Riptide buff on my raid frame. And that is how you're going to know who Riptide is on and anything like that. Again, you can type it in um, and things like that and do custom ones. You can see when Riptide is about to fall off on the bar. That is as simple as you need Voodoo to be when you're a beginner. Quite literally, you can heal raids and Mythic Plus, etc. with just that minimal setup. It's amazing. But again, if you do need any help, just join my Discord, ask me, blah, blah, blah. I'm happy to help. But I hope this guide was really helpful. I hope it wasn't overwhelming. It's definitely a lot of spells we have as a shaman, but it is such a fun spec when you get your head around it um, and how the different spells work together. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to subscribe and let me know your thoughts down below in the comments.